Hi, welcome back to an Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about Secret Territory. This is going to be a good run through of Secret Territory, the kind of approach and strategy that you can take and hopefully you should be able to clear it like the moment you unlock it because I did. So before we get into the Secret Territory itself, you can see that it ends in four days and four hours and the reason for this is because it is a weekly event. For those of you who play Arknights, it is very similar to your Annihilation. It's probably one of our greatest resources for like rolls and premium gems. However, we also do get some other stuff as well so let me just get into the exploration and then let's start talking about it okay so as you can see i've already finished it actually and so i can't showcase any of this but i do have some footage that i would like to go through so to start off let me give a brief introduction into secret territory so it's just going to be really fast guys essentially for you guys who know like your roguelikes this is that you have a starting position over here and then you can take a path all the way to the end so this path that you take is filled with a lot of different like cells or tiles and each tile represents a different like circumstance so for example, this is a normal battle. This is a harder battle. Typically what a harder battle is, is that it has like some kind of condition. Perhaps like enemies have like shields or like they have 50% more HP. Otherwise, we also have some like friendly ones in which there's usually like a treasure chest. I don't think I got one here. You've got a rest point over here and so on. So as you can tell, like there are good and there are bad ones. So to actually play through this, you need to consume this currency over here, the 69. <laughs> nice. So this is MS and essentially every time you do a stage, you use some MS. The amount of MS you use is dictated by the amount of turns you take to clear that stage. And so yeah, that's essentially it. You're going from here and you can see the path that I took. I went up here, up here, up here, and then I went all the way over here. Nothing really to it. That's kind of it. So you just have to do this like whole path thing five times. So as you can see, it's level five here. So what I want to talk about now is like the path that you should take. Of all of these options, which one is kind of like optimal? And so my goal here is going to be to maximize the amount of text fragments or other rewards. And so it's for that reason that you should take Take the hardest path possible. You can see that there is a single sword here, the double swords here. Obviously, the double swords are going to be the harder ones. The harder ones are just going to have like some little quirk, like maybe the enemies have more attack or they have more HP, but they run away or they all have like shields, just like stuff like that. And so therefore, if you have to choose between like a single or a double sword, you take the double sword. I really think that anybody should be able to clear it. Like it's really not that hard as long as you know what's coming. So one of the quirks is like every enemy gets a shield. And so that's why like getting the sniper relic with the one that actually clears the shield on normal attacks it's just a really really good relic on the other hand what we have up here is like these healing ones and so i don't take these ones because i don't think they give you text fragments and honestly like if i had to choose between that or a battle i'll take a battle because it's going to give me text fragments and so yeah i never take these like healing or like rest stop ones all right lastly we've got these guys over here so the scroungers scroungers is kind of like a bonus round and like you should definitely go for it on the other hand we also do have like treasure tiles but i didn't get one on this floor and so with scroungers and treasure tiles in the picture i want to kind of give like a summary of the path you should take. When you first get into a floor, the first thing you should look at is actually scout ahead and see if there are any scrounger rounds or if there are any like treasure chest rounds. Then you should take the hardest path possible to get there. Take as many double swords as you can. And so after you finish the treasure chest or like the scrounger round or like the good ones, then you keep going and keep picking the hard ones. Also avoid all of the rest stops. You guys should be running a healer anyway. Honestly, that's kind of like a really good summary as for like a pathing approach. Let me go to the secret store and show you this is what we have. And so so what exactly should you prioritize out of these ones over here? I think the most obvious answer for everybody is the first thing that you get is that you clear out the star flares. It actually only costs 2,000 to get both of the star flares. 2,000 of this text fragment, which is what you get as you clear each roguelike. All right, guys. So with that being said, I want to talk more about the strategy, like how to clear it. What relics did I take? What team did I take? So this is the team that I ran. And remember, guys, in roguelikes or in like secret territory, generally, you don't have like the stats. The stats of your characters are actually fixed except for like when you have breakthroughs or if you have ascensions. When I cleared secret territory, I don't think I had a single ascension and everybody was like level 30. So from secret territory's point of view, everyone was just ascension zero and that's kind of it. Okay, so let me talk through this a little bit. So this is just kind of like my mainstay team. It's the team that I use for everything. But first, let me talk about Vice, Miss Blanc and Phyllishai. I use Vice a lot and honestly, like if I had a full mono team, I would run it. And if I could run that, I would actually have Vice as my captain. Vice as captain is just like so incredibly good because she is always like doing doing damage. She doesn't even have to be near them to do damage, right? On top of that, she is a sniper. And when we go back to the items, you'll see that I picked a lot of sniper things and it really helped. However, what about the whole world? Like, why should I take water and all that? It's because the bosses are fire and like forest. And water is strong against fire and neutral against forest. And so you can see why water is like so favored here. However, on top of that, I have Carleen and Carleen honestly made it like ultra easy. And I'll show you guys the clip soon, but like Carleen is essentially like the anti-Nozard. As for Miss 
Blanc and Felicia. Miss Blanc is just a converter. If I had a better converter, I'd use them like Sariel or something. But she's also quite good because she also does AoE damage, which is like boss killing. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, a lot of the AoE skills in the game, they hit per tile. And if a boss occupies 10 tiles, then it's going to hit them 10 times. And so Miss Blanc, while replaceable, she was still quite good. Lastly, we've got Felicia, who does teleport as well as healing. And healing is so important in this and like most roguelikes probably because like your progress carries on to the next stage. And what I mean by that is that if you ended the stage at like HP of 80%, then you're going to enter the next stage with a HP of 80%. And so Felicia was always there to make sure that you were always topped up. If you don't have Felicia, Zoya will probably work as well and everybody gets Zoya. However, I did pay to win this Felicia from the shop for like $1.50. And so that is always an option for you guys. I would really recommend it. I think that Felicia is probably like one of the strongest healers in the five star range that is, you know, with the teleport and a heal on teleport, like that's pretty freaking good. And then last of all, we have Michael because just for like me, I think Michael is a really strong off element captain. It gives me the flexibility of sometimes running onto like thunder tiles. And he also has like a teleport as well as like an AOE damage. Again, like I said, if I had a better unit like Sariel, I would run Sariel instead and have Vice as captain. All right, guys. So that's essentially my team. I think the person who is probably like the most important is actually Philishai or a healer, like any healer, because you need to keep yourself topped up. Otherwise, if I had more converters, I would take them like Harleen converts a little, Miss Blanc converts a little bit. But honestly, my team's ability to convert is like pretty low. However, how I have made that up is that I actually have three teleports. I think that currently teleports are extremely underrated and like you guys should like try them out a bit more. I still think that converters are king, like the more the better. However, I didn't have that many and so I just had to make do. All right, let's get back into the secret territory itself. And so with my team introduced, let's get into relics because you'll see like a lot of the decisions I made are based on the team. And right off the bat, you guys can already see I've got four sniper relics. They're all exceptionally good, but this one was really, really big for me because a lot of the double cross ones, like the harder stages, they actually feature like a lot of the shield units. What I mean by that is that when I went through it, there were actually three stages, I think a couple more actually, where every single enemy had a shield count of three. And so I just took my vice and like ran over them. Otherwise, you can see over here, there's a 30% chance that a sniper will release an additional chain combo. Vice is just like free damage and this procced quite a fair bit. And so I would definitely recommend this relic. Honestly, most of the S relics are really good. Like look at this, normal attacks, inflict slow, minus one movement, probably less useful, but it's still pretty good. However, let me talk about the ones that really stood out and the ones that like really didn't. And so this one up here, mobile energizer, this one was one of the like not so impressive ones. And it's just because it gives you an MS. And honestly, like I was able to play from start to end with the like 100 MS that they gave me. Other than that, I've got the rebel yell down here, which gives you more damage when the team is affected by debuff. I just didn't find myself getting affected by debuffs like that much. And even this one over here, like when I take damage, it was just kind of like meh. And then we've got this one over here, reload a bandage on the field when a battle begins. Honestly, because I was running Philishai or like your healer, this one didn't really do much for me. Magic Lumina box is pretty meh because I never go to the Lumina Spring. And yeah, that's kind of the lackluster ones. However, there are a lot of really freaking good ones. And so let me start with the S ones. This one is quite nice because like you get four out of eight adjacent tiles becomes chromatic tiles. So chromatic tiles are ones that are rainbow. And so it means that you can use them for any color combo. Then we've got this one over here, kills eclipse sites under 10% HP. This one is pretty insane because it works on bosses as well. After that, we've got these A ones. And honestly, the A ones I think are better than the S ones. And the reason is because they have set effects. So you can see this is the lance, the sword and the shield of radiance. If I click into it, you'll see that there is actually an effect here. Effects double when possessing all three radiance relics. Honestly, that's pretty freaking good. So as you can see, like reduces one cooldown round for converter aurorians after killing a large eclipse site. This one's giving me more sniper buffs for my vice. Like that's so freaking good. And then we've got this one over here where we get some HP regeneration. This is really good, but this is probably like my least favorite set. And so I would like actually deprioritize this one. My second favorite set is actually this one over here, the silver moon. And it's because like it just really screws up a lot of like the small monsters. Honestly, I really do think that this made a difference. However, the one that really made a difference is these guys over here. These freaking floating orbs are like just so freaking good. I reckon it's the best one. I reckon it's the best set relic. And I'll show you guys some footage of me like showcasing this. It's just nutty. All right. So essentially what these guys do is that when you attack normally, your captain will also deal the same element as this floaty guy. So for example, if I hit something with Michael, Michael is going to do one attack of lightning, which is his like base element. And he's also going to do like one attack of fire. However, if you collect more than one of them, they actually stack. So for example, if I had these two, then Michael would attack thunder damage and then fire damage from this guy over here. And then ice damage from this guy over here. And so therefore, if you collect all four of them, you're going to be doing like every single element damage. However, it doesn't stop there. There is a set effect. And that's probably what is like even more cracked. Aurorian with a collection of floaters of four elements unleashes one powerful attack after a chain combo. And this powerful attack is AOE and it's massive. It does 
so much damage. Again, I will show you guys that very, very quick. Let's just finish off the rest of the relics. So again, as you can see, we've got like the plus 5% for water Aurorians because I'm trying to run like a mono team. And it's for reasons like this, like that rainbow teams aren't exactly that great. It's very, very obvious that the game wants you to play mono teams with stuff like this. All right, aside from that, let me talk about this one over here, the Paralyzer. The Paralyzer is decent because like the scroungers drop like additional stuff. Okay, with that being said, let's get into some of the footage and like, oh my God, the footage just, it's so cracked. Let me just get it up for you guys. Holy moly. All right, guys. So before we watch Nazad get roasted, I wanted to show you guys a couple of the different like relics. So the first one I want to show you is the chromatic one. So all it is, is you guys see these like rainbow tiles. Essentially, I could walk on this and I could walk anywhere, right? So I could go into yellow. Very basic, very easy to understand. After that, we've got this like medic pack over here. And to be honest, I did not use it that much. Again, if you're running a healer, if you're playing properly, you should not need this. And so therefore you can pick another relic. Last of all, we've got this one over here, which restores like one MS when you actually get it. I really don't think you need this. I think this is probably like the most useless one out of all of them. MS just like recovers over time and you're going to have enough MS to actually clear the entire secret territory if you just play right. Honestly, I was able to do it in one sitting. And so the moral of the story is pick up a different relic. All right, guys, this is the one I wanted to show you. This is the one where Nazard gets absolutely roasted. So the first thing I want to show you guys here is you guys can see those floating orbs around my Michael. Those orbs are those like elemental orbs that are going to do like the extra bit of damage. And here I'm going to show you why Carleen is the anti-Nazard. So here we go and let's have a look at what we do. So firstly, we do that. So it's at 69 HP right now. <laughs> Very nice today. After that, we are going to be using Michael's skill and Michael just does the jump and he does the AoE. It does like okay damage. So it's going to hit three tiles. So you should see three instances of damage. Bam. And that was one, two, three, 1.9k each. After that, you can see me going for Carleen and this is the spicy part. Oh my Lord. Look at all those tiles. It is only good times from here. And this is, guys, I just want to talk about this. I know this looks OP as hell, but there are very, very few situations where you can actually do this. Nazard is one of the very few bosses, actually the only one that I know of that actually does this. However, Nazard does come up a couple of different times in secret territory. And so like, I think it's worse. So yeah, Carleen teleports and paints the entire column blue. And then it's just going to be like tragedy from here. It's just tragic. So a Yumi teleport over here, but there is actually no reason to. So we've made it to this side with the Yumi teleport. As you saw, we did a little bit of healing. However, what we have now, you can see it even better. You can see Michael with the floating orbs. And then, so we're about to go attack Nazard now. So honestly, like all of this, like none of it is actually necessary except for Carleen's. I was actually just saving those skills because I know that Nazard always does this like on his like fourth turn or something. And then, so this is just going to give us a little bit more damage and then away we go. So we're just going to convert a little bit and then, oh my God, here we go. This is so freaking juicy. Oh mama. Oh mama. Watch that. Watch this. Watch this. Fire. Bam, bam, bam. Oh my God. Look at all those numbers. Look at all those freaking numbers. That, but that is not the best bit. That is not the best bit. You can see here, Nazard, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're about to see some really, really big damage. Watch this, guys. Watch this. What the? F what the frick? He just completely got eradicated. 24%. Play. Bam. Where do you freaking go? So that damage again is the effect from those four orbs. It is probably like my favorite relic and my favorite relic set because it attacks the entire field with an AOE. And so a lot of the time when I was playing through the stages, it actually just cleared out a whole bunch of mobs that I didn't really want to reach. Guys, that is so busted. I, I don't know how this actually made it through the beta. Did nobody tell them be like, hey, this, this might be like a little bit too strong. So guys, here is just a little bit more footage from that freaking OP burst. Like, look at this, watch. So after all of this, after this heal, we're gonna let go of that massive AOE. Just watch him die, just watch them die. Bing. What the, what the frick? What the frick? That's so OP. And then you can do that every single time. You can do that every freaking time. Like seriously, it made like my secret territory like so easy. So yeah, anytime you see those little elemental orbs, you better go grab it. But with that being said, I think that's kind of the end of it. I'm not sure there's much left to talk about. And so let's wrap up the video. Let's call it there. So guys, today I have a secret message for you and that's Orbeez. These Orbeez are just like so incredibly insane. So if you guys could drop that secret message Orbeez down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. It lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video and I'm very grateful for that. Otherwise, you guys already know what to do. If this video has helped you or it was kind of entertaining then consider a like a sub a comment a pin but otherwise thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye